In today's discussion, we're going to be looking at how to protect your users from malicious files on OneDrive for Business, SharePoint, and Teams. So we want to make sure that from cloud storage, your users can't download files that can affect their computer and potentially others on your network. All right, so if you're new to this channel, my name is Harry Loudson. I'm a technology strategist for Microsoft. And the goal of this channel is to teach you software, but also hopefully show you something that's going to be helpful for you and your organization. So in this video, we're going to look at the end user experience. We're also going to look at the admin experience of how to set this up. So we're going to take a file that's saved in Teams today. So a team inside Teams, which in turn is on SharePoint. And right now it's a malicious file that's saved there and we could download it and effectively infect our computer. So let's go ahead and set up ATP and block these malicious files from being downloaded in your organization. All right, so firstly, let's go ahead and get the admin side of the house sorted out. So there's a couple of steps that we're gonna go through here. So firstly, we need to make sure as a prereq that audit log is set up in your tenant. We're then gonna go ahead and set up the ATP rules that we need and policy that we need. And then we're gonna go look at some additional things that you can do, which are definitely recommended around blocking malicious files from being downloaded. And then how to create an alert as well, if a malicious file is found, we can alarm the right teams that that's been happening. So we're now inside the admin center for Microsoft 365. The first thing that we've got to do is just click show all. And under admin centers, we're going to go to security. This brings us into protection.office.com. You could, of course, just navigate straight there as well. So first up, as I said, the prereq, we're wanting to go to search and then to audit log search. In my tenant, this is already enabled, but in your own, if you have a box here saying that you can enable this, you need to go ahead and do that first. And I'll put on the screen how that looks. But once you've got that enabled, now all we need to do is go to threat management and then go to policy. And from here, you can see there's a whole bunch of things that you can do from anti-phishing, to safe links, to anti-malware. And of course, you wanna go through these in your organization and see how they make sense and set them up. Because what I show today is only part of the puzzle. And you wanna make sure that you're secured in other ways other than just malicious files in OneDrive Ship team. But that being said, we're gonna focus here on ATP safe attachments. So what I'm gonna do is click into that. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a global setting. So we can choose global settings at the top and then we can choose on the right hand side, we've got a couple of options, but at the top, we've got protect files in SharePoint, OneDrive and Microsoft Teams. And that's exactly what we're doing in this demo. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn that on and then click save. And that's all we really need to do from the beginning of this. So now we've got the ATP globally set up to look for malicious files. What I'm now gonna do is we're gonna switch gears and go to PowerShell and look up how to actually block downloads if we find one of these malicious files. All right, so at this point, we've got ATP set up. You know, we're gonna be able to find malicious files, in SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams. And if we find a malicious file, for your users, they're not gonna be able to open that file, move, copy, or share it, which is great news. We don't want you to do any of that with a malicious file. However, there are a couple of things your users can still do. Number one, they can delete. But number two, they can also download that file. Delete is fine. I mean, we want you to be able to delete malicious files. But download, well, that could be a little bit of an issue because if they download a file and they execute it, well, now they could be infecting their computer and potentially others as well. So let's go ahead and look at how we can stop users from being able to download these files from SharePoint. And today, this isn't something you can do in the admin console, but it's really easy to do with PowerShell. So what I'm going to do is load up PowerShell and let's walk through some of those commands. And because this is SharePoint Online, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the SharePoint module, SharePoint Online module in your PowerShell. So I'm gonna go install it by using install module, pointing that if you're using PowerShell 5 and above to the PowerShell SharePoint Online module. So now we've got that, we now need to connect to your SharePoint Online service. So we can use connect-spo service and then point it to your admin URL. What you're gonna find here is that where you got that dash admin, before that, you need to put your company name there. You know, don't use the one that you see on screen because that's to my tenant only. So once we got that done, 
Now we can go ahead and make a tenant wide change. And this tenant wide change is so we can disallow the infected file download. And all you need to do is just do set hyphen SPO tenant hyphen, you know, space hyphen disallow infected file download. And then we're going to set that to true. And what that's going to do now is for all those SharePoint sites is we're not going to allow the users to download these files. And then you can just go ahead and verify that with get SPO tenant as well. And that's all there is to it. That's all we need to do in PowerShell to make sure your users can't download files and infect their machines. So now let's go look at the alerting side of the house. Let's go set an alert for detecting these malicious files. All right, so up next, we're going to look at how do we create an alert for if we detect malware in a file, we want to let somebody know about this. We don't want it to happen in the background and we don't know. So let's create an alert that you can send, to, for example, your security team or your IT team, whoever it might be. So up first, you just need to go to alerts and then alert policies. And from alert policies, of course, you're going to see all the policies you've already built. But we're going to go ahead and do new alert policy. And from there, give it a name. I'm going to choose malicious files detected. And then you need to choose your severity and category. In my organization here, we're going to say this is a high severity and category threat management. And then I'm going to go ahead and just choose next. And then from here, first up, we've got to say, what do you want to alert on? Well, we know what we want to alert on. We want to learn on detected malware in a file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And then at the bottom here, we've got how do you want the alert to be triggered? Well, in my case, and especially for this demonstration, I'm just going to set it to the default. Every time an activity matches this rule, trigger the alert and then send me an email. You can make you know, differences here on whether when the volume matches activity reaches the threshold, then go ahead and alert us. But we're just going to keep it as default and move on. And now you need to go ahead and choose your email recipient. So I'm just going to leave it again as default as just the admin of this tenant. But in your case, you know, add your security team in, add your SOC in here. Whoever it is that needs to know that a malicious file has been detected, they want to be in this box here. And the last thing you can choose is just how often can you get these notifications. So in this alert, hopefully we don't get that many malicious files, so I'm not going to have a limit on it. But if you have an alert that's rather chatty, shall we say, you might want to limit just to get a notification of this once a day, and then you can review it. So I'm going to go ahead now and choose next. Um, yeah, at the bottom here, you can choose whether you turn it on right away or do it later. Well, we're going to do it right away, and then just do finish. And that's really it on how to create the alert policy. We'll come back in a bit and look at what that looks like once we get the uh, the alert inside our email. So now it's time for us to look at the end user experience. We've got ATP set up. We've got blocking of downloads for any malicious files for SharePoint and OneDrive and turn teams. And then we've gone ahead and set up an alert from the admin side. But firstly, you know, before we saw a file that we had, which was going to be malicious if ATP picked it up inside Teams. So what I'm going to do is show to us here inside Teams that if we now go over to Files, and this is using the desktop client, just to let you know. So if we now go to Files, we can see here that this malicious file that I'm trying to entice people to download has now got a red X. So we first, you know, just visually, we can tell that this file is already compromised. And if I now click this, where before we would have been able to open, share, save this file, now we only have two options download and delete. However, we said delete was fine, which it is, but download we blocked. So let's actually test that out. And to show you there's no kind of sorcery here, I'm going to go over to the downloads file and you can see here that it's completely empty. So in theory now, if we select this file again and I choose download, you can see the first thing it tells us is this file has been compromised by malware. Your admin stopped you from doing any features. And this is actually stopping us from download. If download setting wasn't in, there would still be a download button where we could still override and download this file. So if I now go to Council and we go back to that Downloads folder, you can see it's completely empty. This is actually using the desktop client. But if we run over to the web, you know, I could actually be here now in the SharePoint side of the house. And again, we can see the red cross on the file, which is great news. I can go ahead and select it and try download again. Same experience. This file is compromised. You can't download it. So 
this is fantastic. This is exactly what we want. We don't want malicious files being downloaded to our local machines that could then compromise this user. So that's the experience for the end user. Let's now jump into the admin side to see if our alert worked. All right, so we're now back in protection.office.com to look at the admin experience. So earlier when we left, we had gone to alert policy and we had created a malicious file detected policy for ourselves. So with that being said, we just saw that there was a malicious file that we weren't allowed to download, which is great. That's the experience we wanted. But from the admin side, have we been alerted? Well, let's have a look. So if we now go to view alerts, we should now be able to see, which we can, there is now a new alert. So malicious file has been detected, threat management, activity count is one. It's the only file that we've seen. So you could go ahead and look at this now, choose whether or not you want to resolve it, press it on notifying new users. But that is, that's great news. because That's exactly what we wanted. But there was one more piece of it. We should also have an email. So if we now head over to Outlook, we can see that this admin has also got an email saying, hey, look, high severity alert has been triggered and a malicious file was detected. So you could see how that could play into your organization. And if you were having these alerts, you, know, you could obviously get them by email or you could put them into something more robust into our sim, like Azure Sentinel, for example. But really, that's all I wanted to show today, how to get ATP running how to set the block of downloads in PowerShell, and then how to make sure that your alerts are set up so your admins and security teams are being notified. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another video around Microsoft technology.